Hi, my name is Dan Wright, member of the Kentucky Wounded Heroes, a retiree from the United States Army as a CW4. Two tours in Vietnam, one in 1968 and another one in 1971. In 1968, I was an enlisted man who operated on the ground. In 1971, I had gone through flight training and I became an attack pilot. The first tour, I was wounded and therefore became a Purple Heart recipient. When I first understood about the Kentucky Wounded Heroes was when my wife had talked with Chuck Reed, president of the organization, and had made mention that I was a Purple Heart recipient. Chuck got on the phone and he gave me a call and he invited me to go to Alaska. And this was 2019. Unbeknownst to me at that time, this trip was not only offered to me, it was offered to many others too. Although I was a retiree from the United States Army, most of the gentlemen that we were with at that time were people that had been first responders or had been wounded in action. I then realized too that a lot of these gentlemen had trouble thinking, fitting in. And at that time, I became more involved with just sitting down and talking to them. The talking to, the conversing with, the answering questions, the sympathizing, and to understand what they had gone through seemed to be therapy for their mental attitude about what we were doing and how we were going about doing it. Once we returned, it was a limited amount of time, uh, maybe a couple of months. I received another phone call from Chuck Reed. He wanted to talk to me again about becoming the treasurer of this organization. So all that was said about donations and contributions, all of those numbers come through me and ultimately find that because of you and your contributions that we are able to support Alaska trips, fishing trips, hunting trips all over the United States. Being a part of this organization has been very rewarding to me personally. I choose to be one of the people who try to provide the necessary help to people who honestly need it. Not necessarily the physical aspect of it, but certainly the mental aspect of it. A point in fact and a story to be told was we were in Lake Erie one year and where we were staying right across the street was a bowling alley. Well, at the end of a fishing day, we went over to the bowling alley to get a hamburger and a beverage. Sitting there at the bar was an individual who was slumped over in his chair, elbows up on the bar, and he was basically looking out into space. He didn't really say anything, even though I approached him and said, how you doing? You know, my name is so-and-so. Are you here with the fishing event? And he said, yes. And I said, well, how did you enjoy it? And he says, well, I don't want to really talk about it. However, right next to him was an empty seat, which is the one I attempted to sit in. And he says, that one's safe. And I said, okay. And there was a, a beer sitting at that seat, which apparently had not been sipped on. And as time went by, a very short period of time, I asked him, I said, when's your friend coming back? He says, he's not coming back. He was killed in action. And I could tell by the look on this individual's face that he was overly sympathetic with the loss of his friend. And I say overly because a lot of people handle this type of trauma, if you will, in different ways. He appeared to me to be someone who, quite frankly, would have gone out into his truck or car or in a silent area, vacant area, and probably would have committed suicide not only because of his dying friend, but because of his own depression, because of it. I talked with him for, oh, good two hours. And at the end of that point in time, he actually left the bar and he left with a smile on his face. That's not because of me using psychology or some learned ability to sympathize with people. It's just that I could talk the same language with him. We talked this, we talked that. He understood what I was saying. I understood what he was thinking, and I was able to help him. And because of that, I'd like to think that he went further in life. I have no idea if he did or not, but he left there with a little bit different attitude. He was a little bit happier when he left there. And that's the kind of stuff that the Kentucky Wounded Heroes does. As time progresses, I understand, and I really can foresee organization growing to a national organization, not only known by a couple of state, by a couple of chapters, certainly this chapter, but known all over as a place where a veteran or someone who has experienced trauma in their life, first responders in particular, veterans in general, can go to and receive a little bit of therapy. 
to take a black day or a depressed day and make it a happy day. Other than that, I understand and think that this organization, in my opinion, is someplace that organization that will be around for a long time and notoriety of which will spread rapidly. The more people participate, the more people will hear about it. Word of mouth is a wonderful thing. Remember that there's always somebody out there that has your best interests in heart. It's not our responsibility to find you, but we are making it very, very capable of you finding us and allowing us to do what we volunteers do on a daily basis.